In this video, we're gonna go over the Ortur LaserMaster 3 LE version. So this is a budget-friendly desktop laser cutter. And in this video, we're gonna go over the types of materials that it can cut and engrave, a few ways that this $550 laser compares to other lasers that cost hundreds more. We'll get into specifically how this model differs from the LaserMaster 3. I'll share a couple of hidden expenses that you should keep in mind if you're gonna invest in this and we'll go over some general specifications. Now this laser was sent to me for free to review and I am an affiliate. So if you wanna check out this laser or the LaserMaster 3, you can check out those links in the description. So what exactly is a desktop laser? So it's an open frame laser with an X and Y axis that can cut or engrave any sort of raster or vector image onto a variety of materials. So there's basically three different types of lasers. Uh, you have diode lasers, fiber lasers, and CO2 lasers. So the Ortur Laser Master is an example of a diode laser, which is the most affordable type of laser. CO2 lasers are more expensive, but they're more powerful, and fiber lasers are generally used Used for engraving metal. So there are all sorts of things you can cut and engrave with a diode laser, like wood, paper, cardboard, fabric, leather, some acrylics, just to name a few. And you can also engrave or etch on things like glass, slate, stone, wood, and other things. So what's the biggest difference between this laser and one that costs hundreds more? So first of all, the biggest thing is gonna be the power of the laser itself. So this is a 10 watt laser, so it's not gonna be as powerful as a 20 watt or 40 watt laser. Laser. Now you might be able to cut the same thickness materials as a more powerful laser. It's just that it's gonna take a lot longer because the laser needs to move a lot slower in order to cut all the way through the material or you have to do multiple passes. And also the frame rigidity is definitely a sacrifice. So this LE model has a more lightweight frame which helps reduce costs, but you're not gonna be able to move the laser around as fast. So not only does the laser have to move a little bit more slowly because of the lower powered laser, but the rigidity of the frame requires it to move slowly as well. That way you don't get jitter as it's moving back and forth. So more expensive lasers will have more robust frames. That way uh, they can withstand the movement of the laser moving back and forth really fast. But other than that, this laser shares a lot of the same features that you find on much more expensive lasers. For instance, it has Wi-Fi so you can connect to your computer or even your phone over Wi-Fi so you don't need a wired connection. It comes with an app that you can use right on your phone, so you don't even need a computer to be able to use it. The work area is 400 by 400 millimeters, which is very common, uh, what you would find on you know competing lasers. You can adjust the height of the laser module with this little thumb screw right here, and then this will slide up and down. And right on the front of the laser module is this little kickstand that you can use. So you can set the focus of the height tighten the thumb screw, and then fold the kickstand up out of the way. The module does have a built-in pathway for air assist, which is kind of nice. So you don't have any like external tubing. If you do buy an air assist compressor, the tube would just connect right in the top here. And in general, I gotta say, I like the cable management of the Ortur laser. They just have nice shape to them and kind of move uh, nicely as the laser's working. So for example, this cable right here, you know, it just has like a nice bend in it, kind of stays out of the way and just feels really nice and heavy duty. Now on the front corner here, you have your USB port so you can connect this to your computer if you're running Lightburn or Laser Gerbil, but it does have built-in Wi-Fi. So this is the Wi-Fi antenna. So you can use this wirelessly to your computer or wirelessly to your phone as well. Now one major difference between the LaserMaster 3 and the LaserMaster 3 LE is this one only has the single button here. So this is gonna be your power button for turning the device on and off. The LaserMaster 3 also has a big red emergency stop button, which is great. If anything goes wrong, you can always hit that button to uh, immediately cut power to the device. And it has a key switch for additional security to make sure that you don't have any unauthorized users playing around with the laser. So those are two major features that the LE version does not have. Now, another thing with the LE version is it doesn't have uh, any sort of like height adjustment. There's no way to attach like adjustable feet to rise this up for like laser cutting 
thicker materials. So you would have to just basically come up with your own way of raising this up if you ever did need to do that. Now you can use a rotary with this laser to engrave uh, tumblers and other cylindrical objects. You just need to unplug the Y axis motor and plug in the rotary motor in its place. What the LaserMaster 3 has that the LE doesn't have is a dedicated port in the back of the frame with a switch so you can quickly toggle back and forth between running your Y axis motor versus running your rotary. So I definitely miss not having that feature on the LE version because these connectors really aren't meant to be plugged in and unplugged constantly. They're kind of meant for just like permanent installation. So if you do plan on swapping your rotary in and out quite often, I would definitely consider getting the LaserMaster 3 instead of the LE version just for that one feature. But if it's just gonna be an occasional use, you'll be fine with the LE. But again, the downside with the LE is you don't have the adjustable feet to raise up the frame. You can see the laser is not high enough to bypass any sort of object that you would be mounting in a rotary. So you kind of have to come up with your own custom way of raising the entire laser frame. Now, one additional cost you really have to keep in mind is you need to have some sort of enclosure for the laser. This thing is gonna be putting out a lot of smoke and dust. It's just, you don't wanna be breathing that in and you need to have some sort of exhaust vent that will get rid of all of that smoke um, if you're, you know, cutting indoors. And another cost that you might want to think about is getting the air assist pump. So air assist is going to enable cleaner cuts, faster cuts, and less burning on the materials that you're cutting or engraving. Now, again, the air assist uh, tubing is kind of built into the laser module, which is nice. So you just connect the tube to the top of the laser module and you're good to go. But smoke is just one of the things. You also wanna protect your eyes. So an enclosure is going to limit the um, amount of laser light radiation that has a chance of you know going into your eye. This is a special type of uh, plastic that can be used to kind of block the laser wavelength spectrum. So it'll protect your eyes while the laser is working. So this is one that I built myself. You can buy them already assembled. It's just another cost to keep in mind if you're gonna get any sort of open frame laser cutter like this. Now you do have several options for controlling the laser. Um, the most straightforward and kind of quickest way to get up and running is to use their app. And so this will connect wirelessly to the laser using Wi-Fi. And so if you do any sort of 3D printing, you'll kind of be familiar with, you know, being able to control the, uh, the device along the X and Y axis to kind of test it. One thing that's kind of interesting about the Laser Master 3 is there aren't any limit switches. So there's basically just a bolt head that sticks out here and right here. And if you tap the home button, the laser will basically um, move itself until it bottoms out on this bolt head. Now, normally you might think that's bad, but the way the motherboard is set up, um, it actually, I guess the motors somehow can communicate back to the motherboard to indicate that there's resistance there. And so they've kind of programmed that in there. So uh, it's just like a much simpler way to home the device um, compared to having to implement you know, additional mechanical switches or optical switches for uh, homing the device. Now, homing allows you to do absolute positioning. So when it goes to the zero, zero, X, Y location, it now knows in the software that this is zero, zero. So it gives you the opportunity to have grids to lay out materials um, on the table here and kind of put it in a certain point in space on the table. And then in the software, you can refer to that exact mark um, in order to engrave or cut at a specific absolute position. Now that in comparison would be relative positioning where you could manually just kind of push the laser and say like, okay, I want this uh, the, the laser to start cutting right here at this point that I just put it uh, put it at. Now, if you're doing uh, cutouts in material like this, where the entire um, project is being cut out of a larger 
piece of material, absolute positioning is really not important at all because uh, you know it doesn't really matter if the laser starts a quarter inch over to the left or right or up and down. You know it can be anywhere in this kind of general vicinity, um, and you know you'll have your project kind of cut out no problem. Where that becomes a little more important is if you're engraving on like a final product that's not being cut out of a material. So in the case of like this slate coaster, if I wanted to engrave on it, I would want to make sure that the positioning of where it starts to engrave the pattern or image or whatever I'm doing um, is really precise and uh, absolute positioning is one way to uh, in, you know, ensure that precision. So you also have tilt detection and offset detection. So if the laser like falls off of a table or is knocked in any way, the laser will detect that and cancel the current job uh, just for safety purposes. Now in the app, there are a number of kind of basic um, additions that you can kind of quickly create jobs. Like if you want to generate a QR code, you can type in any custom text and it will generate the barcode or QR code on the fly. And so you just tap the next button and it will lay it out on this grid here. You can drag the design around. Uh, you can scale the design. Now, one thing this laser head doesn't have is a crosshair uh, visualizer. So for framing a project or kind of visualizing where this the laser is actually going to start uh, engraving this, there is a preview uh, region button. So you press this button and what it does is it'll actually um, use a very low power uh, with the laser itself and kind of outline where that design is going to be cut. So you can also open files that you've prepared ahead of time, do basic text images. Um, there is a basic library here with a bunch of generic kind of designs, vector designs that you can uh, engrave with. And there's a puzzle generator as well. Now, when you do have a design you wanna engrave, you need to make sure in the configuration options, you go ahead and set up the configuration of the material that you're using. So there's a library built in with all different types of materials. Um, so you can kind of preload the settings that you would want to use for uh, engraving or cutting all of these different types of materials. So let's say I wanted to engrave a piece of pine. I can just load that up. It'll load all of the settings so I don't have to really do any guesswork. And then I could go ahead and start the project. But if you're really looking for more advanced control over your laser, um, you're going to want to use some desktop software like Lightburn. And this does have a USB port so you can plug it into a computer or use the Wi-Fi to connect to the computer like that as well. So it's fully compatible with Lightburn, which is kind of one of the most popular pieces of software for laser cutting and engraving. So I did spend quite a bit of time testing out this laser. I had some trouble at first when I was trying to work with Lightburn. Um, apparently some of the settings weren't dialed in right when I did the setup and I did find a little bit of frustration just like trying to get support, you know, just like basic stuff like f trying to find a manual on their website and uh, I kind of resorted to just joining the Facebook group that uh, of users and kind of posted my problem and apparently the laser wasn't using its full power so it was a simple setting in Lightburn to get it going. Um, I was able to get it to work fine on on the uh, the app so this is an example of the app but I was having trouble with um, using Lightburn here so it just wasn't using the full power but after some testing I was able to get some really good results so I ran a few material tests here and you can see this is three millimeter plywood so um, this is really the optimal kind of test you want to get at. So this was my first test here. You know, the entire first row got cut out, but none of the second ones. So I just kept playing around with the speed parameters until I got a good range that would demonstrate, you know, a perfect uh, trade-off between speed and power. So for cutting three millimeter plywood, the best results or fastest results I got were 400 millimeters per second at 100% power. So this this block right here. Now you can see it, it almost cut through um, a lot of these. I could probably punch through some of these, but this is definitely the setting I would use uh, for cutting three millimeter plywood. I also did an engrave test and uh, you can see there's quite a bit of depth um, 
in some of these here. So there's there's quite a uh, good gradient of different engraving results uh, with this laser. So the 10 watt laser is certainly capable of cutting uh, three millimeter plywood. I wouldn't recommend going the full 15,000 millimeters per minute uh, speed that they advertise as like their max speed. Um, you're going to get a lot of kind of rubber banding. Um, maybe I could tighten up my belts a little bit to kind of reduce that, but still you're kind of like working the machine to its maximum all the time. It's like driving a Lamborghini with the pedal down, like 24 seven. Um, it's just not something you want to do, but overall, this is a great laser. It, it works well. Um, Ortur has been around for quite a while in the desktop laser kind of uh, product niche. So again, if you want to check out the LE or the Laser Master 3, you can check out the links in the description below. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.